Okay. Are we carrying on today? Lion reading chapter four, which is called Bertie and the Lion. One morning, a week or so later, Bertie was woken by a chorus of urgent neighing. He jumped out of his bed and ran to the window. A herd of zebras were scattering away from the waterhole, chased by a couple of hyenas. Then he saw more hyenas, three of them standing stock still, noses pointing, eyes fixed on the waterhole. It was only now that Bertie saw the lion cub. But this one wasn't white at all. He was covered in mud with his back to the waterhole and he was waving a pathetic paw at the hyenas who were beginning to circle. The lion cub had nowhere to run to and the hyenas were sidling cl ever closer. Bertie was downstairs in a flash, leaping off the veranda and racing barefoot across the compound, shouting at the top of his voice. He threw open the gate and charged down the hill towards the waterhole, yelling and screaming and waving his arms like a wild thing. Startled at this sudden intrusion, the hyenas turned tail and ran, but not far. Once within range, Bertie hurled a broadside of pedal pebbles at them, and they ran off again, but again not far. Then he was at the waterhole and between the lion cub and the hyenas, shouting at them to go away. They didn't. They stood and watched, uncertain for a while. Then they began to circle again, closer, closer. That was when the shot rang out. The hyenas bolted into the long grass and were gone. When Bertie turned around, he saw his mother in her nightgown, rifle in hand, running towards him. Down. He had never seen her run before. Between them, they gathered up the mud-matted cub and brought him home. He was too weak to struggle, though he tried. As soon as they had given him some warm milk, they dunked him in the bath to wash him. As the first of the mud came off, Bertie saw that he was white underneath. You see, he cried triumphantly, he is white, he is, I told you, didn't I? He's my white lion. His mother still could not bring herself to believe it. Five baths later, she had to. They sat him down by the stove in the washing basket and fed him again. All the milk he could drink, and he drank the lot. Then he lay down and slept. He was still asleep when Bertie's father got back at lunchtime. They told him how it had all happened. Please, father, I want to keep him, Bertie said. And so do I, said his mother. We both do. And she spoke as Bertie had never heard her speak before, her voice strong, determined. Bertie's father didn't seem to know quite how to reply. He just said, we'll talk about it later. And then he walked out. They did talk about it later when Bertie was supposed to be in bed. He wasn't, though. He heard them arguing. He was outside the sitting room door, watching, listening. His father was pacing up. He'll grow up, you know, he was saying. You can't keep a, lion, a grown lion, you know that. And you know we can't just throw him back to the hyenas, replied his mother. He needs us, and maybe we need him. He'll be someone for Bertie to play with for a while. And then she added sadly, after all, it's not as if he's going to have any brothers or sisters, is it? At this, Bertie's father went over to her and kissed her gently on the forehead. It was the only time Bertie had ever seen him kiss her. All right then, he said, all right, you can keep your lion. So the white cub came, the white lion cub came to live amongst them in the farmhouse. He slept at the end of Bertie's bed Wherever Bertie went, the lion cub went too, even to the bathroom, where he would watch Bertie have his bath and lick his legs dry afterwards. They were never apart. It was Bertie who saw to the feeding, milk four times a day from one of his father's beer bottles, until later on when the lion cub lapped from a soup bowl. There was impala meat whenever he wanted it, and as he grew, and he grew fast, he wanted more and more of it. For the first time in his life, Bertie was totally happy. The lion cub was all the brothers and sisters he could ever want, all the friends he could ever need. The two of them would sit side by side on the sofa out on the veranda and watch the great red sun go down over Africa and Bertie would read him Peter and the Wolf and at the end he would always promise him that he would never let go, never let him go off to, to a zoo and live behind bars like the wolf in the story and the lion cub would look up at Bertie with his trusting amber eyes. Why don't you give him a name? 
his mother asked one day. Because he doesn't need one, replied Bertie. He's a lion, not a person. Lions don't need names. Bertie's mother was always wonderfully patient with the lion, no matter how much mess he made, how many cushions he pounced on and ripped apart, no matter how much crockery he smashed. None of it seemed to upset her, and strangely, she was hardly ever ill these days. There was a spring to her step, and her laughter pealed around the house. His father was less happy about it. Lions, he muttered on, should not live in houses. You should keep them outside in the compound. You should keep him outside in the compound. But they never did. For both mother and son, the lion had brought a new life to their days. Life and laughter. Okay, your five questions are list all the phrases which describe movement of animals on page 29. So there was quite a few. See if you can list them all. Why did Bertie run to the water hole? Why did Bertie and his what did Bertie and his mum do with the cub when they got home? Why did Bertie's dad let them keep the lion cub? And what did the lion cub eat and drink? Your sentence stems. Make sure you answer in full sentences. Pause the video while you have a go and then press play to go through the answers. Okay, so the phrases which describe movement Words or phrases are scattering, chased, beginning to circle, waving a pathetic paw and sidling over on page 29. Question two, Bertie ran to the water hole to save the lion cub from the hyenas. Question three, when they got home, Bertie and his mum gave the lion cub some milk and washed him in the bath. Question four, Bertie's dad let them keep the lion cub as he and Bertie's mum were not going to have any more children. They couldn't have any more children, could they? And question five, the lion cub ate impala meat and drank milk. Your three brain power questions. Why do you think Michael Morpurgo, so remember Michael Morpurgo is our author, why do you think he uses italics when Bertie is talking to his mum on page 31? Okay. Question seven, do you think Bertie's mum is a strong character usually? Why do you think this? Give examples from the text use page 32 to help you with that one and question eight on page 34 it says for the first time in his life Bertie was totally happy why do you think he has been unhappy until this point okay use your sentence stems write in full sentences pause the video while you have a go okay question six why does Michael Morpurgo use italics C let's find the italics when Bert is talking to his mum there it is he is white he is okay so it's only the word is that's in italics but it does give us quite a bit of information about how Bertie is talking to his mum okay as do the exclamation marks as do the way that he he doesn't just say you see he said he cried triumphantly Okay, triumphantly means he's really happy, almost like he's won something. Okay, I think Michael Morpurgo uses italics because it emphasises, okay, that Bertie was telling the truth earlier in the story when he told his mum and his mum didn't believe him. Okay, Michael Morpurgo uses these italics to emphasise that, okay, to emphasise that he was right. So we would read that from here as you see he cried triumphantly he is white he is I told you didn't I okay so it's almost like he's proving to his mom that he was right and she was wrong to not believe him question seven do you think Bertie's mom is a strong character usually use 32 to help you we know from reading previously in the book uh, earlier on in the book that Bertie's mum normally just goes along with what Bertie's dad says. So Bertie's dad said you can't go out of the compound. And no matter how many times Bertie asks his mum, she says no. She said no, what would your father say? Your father won't allow that. So she usually just agrees with the dad is the impression that I get as the reader. And then when, the, when they have got the lion, you can see on page 32, the mum stands up to the dad and says so do I we both do and it says here Bertie had never heard her speak 
before. She spoke as if as Bertie had never heard her speak before. So he'd not heard her speak in this tone before. It said her voice was strong and her voice was determined. Okay, so that means that she is sticking up for what she believes in. Okay, she's standing up for what she believes in. She believes that this lion should stay in their house. Okay, and she is willing to fight for it. Okay, before we got the impression that she was quite weak. Okay, she was ill quite a lot of the time. She was weak. She didn't stand up to the dad. She didn't fight for what she believed in. Whereas this, on this page, this little section here, we are getting that impression. Okay. And question eight. For the first time in his life, Bertie was totally happy. Page 34. Where is it? Last paragraph down here. Oops. For the first time in his life, Bertie was totally happy. Why do you think he'd been unhappy until this point? For this, there's no actual quotes that you... Well, you might want to use some quotes from earlier on in the text. But just have a think about what sort of life Bertie leads. Okay. He's quite alone. We've already spoken about this. He's lonely. He's got no friends. He's got no family. Okay. His mum, who he spends most of his time with, is sometimes happy, sometimes not. In fact, most of the time not. Most of the time she's not and she's poorly. Um, so he must have a pretty lonely and pretty miserable time. Okay. It wouldn't be very fun, I don't think, at this point to be Bertie. So... I think that's why he's been unhappy until that point in his life. But the lion, cub, that's come along has changed that and it's made him and his mum quite happy. Hey guys, hope you found yesterday's lesson okay and you're ready to go through your answers for your do it and your secure it. So, the first question asks you to convert these AM times to digital and then order them from earliest to latest, okay? So, uh, the first one, hopefully you got that that was 0830, because it's gone past the 8, and it's on the 6, which is 30. The second one was 0458, so 2 minutes to 5. And the third one was 1018, okay? Now, if you put them in order from earliest to latest, you should have got that it was 0458, 0830, and then 1018, okay? Uh, number two, what would the digital time be if it was 12 minutes later than the time shown on the clock? So the time on the clock is 0614, and then you needed to add 12 minutes. So hopefully you got that it was 0626. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I didn't get this, don't panic, send me an email and we'll go through it together. All right. If you got onto your do it extra challenge, well done. I'm just going to go through the answers for you. So the first thing you needed to do was work out what time was shown on the analog clock and hopefully that you got that it was 09.35. So because he got there at that time, he could have caught the Bramley train and the Leeds train because they're all times that come after 09.35. He would have missed the other two. You then needed to work out how long you would have had to have waited for each train. So the 0942, he would have had to have waited seven minutes for that one. And the Leeds one, he would have had to have waited 28 minutes. Well done, guys, if you got those, because they were tricky. Then for your secure it, it said Ryan arrives at the cinema at the time shown on the analogue clock. Let's look at that first. So... It's showing 11.50. Hopefully we all got that. He thinks he's on time to watch Space Wars. Is he correct? Explain why. So Space Wars started at 11.46 a.m. So hopefully you all agreed that he was not correct. He was actually four minutes late for the film. So anything along those lines for your explanation would have been perfect. Today we're going to build on what we did yesterday. And we're going to look at converting analog clocks to digital, but we're going to look up to 24 hours. OK. So we talked about the fact that we look at a.m. and p.m. to tell the time or we can use uh, the 12 hour digital clock. Now, today we're going to look at the third way that we can tell the time, and that is through a 24 hour clock. And this means the hours after 12 noon are converted to 1300 to 2300. So it's still the same, the four digit format is used, the two digits, colon, and then the two for the minutes.
Now I'm hoping you have all seen something like this before, but I've put up on the screen now for you um, a clock that has got the corresponding hours on a 24 hour clock. So one is 13, two is 14, three is 15, etc, etc. Now midnight can be referred to as both 000 or 2400. Now before we move on, do you notice a pattern between the, num the number of the hour and the number here? Okay, so do you notice any patterns between your numbers? Have a little look, pause me if you need to, and see what you think. I'm hoping you might have picked up on the fact that there is a 12 hours difference between the numbers. So for each number, all you need to do is add or subtract 12. So 6 p.m., if you add 12 to 6, you get 18. So 6 p.m. becomes 1800. And 22.30, we take away 12 from the 22, it gives you 10, so it is 10.30 p.m. Let's have a go then now. So what we're going to do is you can either write this down and think in your head, um, pause me if you'd like to, but what I want you to do is have a go at writing the missing 24-hour time and the missing 12-hour time. So you've got 3.15 a.m. So what does that look like as a 24 hour digital time? 1620, what would that be as a 12 hour time? And then 1.10 p.m., what would that be as a 24 hour time? Come back when you're ready to get the answers. Okay, so 3.15 a.m. Hopefully from yesterday we all knew that that was 03.15. 1620, we just need to do that at 16 take away 12. That gives us 4.20 p.m. And 1.10 p.m. We need to add 1, uh, 1 and 12 together. So we would have got 13.10. Using the rule then of adding or subtracting 12, can you work out the missing digits on, on the number line? Okay. So 1 became 13, 2 became 14, 3, 15, 4, 16, what's 5, etc, etc. Okay. Write them in your books. Yeah. Hopefully we all got those numbers there. So it goes 1 to 12 and then carries on 13 all the way to 0, 0 or you can write 24. Let's have a look then at those analogue clocks. Can we match the times to the AM time and the PM time that that analogue clock shows? Because remember, an analogue clock has only got those 12 hours so it always looks the same. All right, so the three clocks match two times. You can have a go in your book or just think about it and then come back when you're ready. Okay, if we look at this first clock then, the hand has just gone past the one and our minute hand is just before the five past. So hopefully we got that that was four minutes past one or 13.04. Okay, the next one was 10 past four. So we'll put that to there. Or if we add on that 12, it is 16.10. And finally, we've got 8.53 here, or 20.53. So for your do it today, you need to find the missing time. So you've got to um, convert the 12 hours to 24 hours and the 24 hours to 12 hours, okay? And then number two, you need to write the digital times for the PM analog clock, okay? So they're showing you a PM time. What is that written digitally? All right, any problems, guys, have a look back through the video, and if that doesn't help, then just send me an email. If you whiz through your do it and you want a bit of an extra challenge, I've set you this one. So you've got an information board at a station, and it shows you when trains are leaving. Um, it's your job to put the trains in order from earliest leaving to latest leaving in a day. Good luck. So finally, for your secure it, three children are meeting in the park. Rosie says we are meeting at 14.10. Teddy says we are meeting at 02.10. And Eva says we are meeting at 10.22. Well, all the children meet at the same time. Explain your answer. Okay, guys, good luck with all your do it and secure it for today. Any problems, send me an email and we'll go through the answers tomorrow. Bye! Morning everyone, we're on to our writing today for Tuesday the 5th of May. So 
onto our warm-up activity. This is carrying on with the work that we were doing yesterday, which was all about changing the verb tenses. Now, remember my little trick I said to you, that if you want to change it into the past tense, add the word yesterday. And if you want to change it into the present tense, use the word today in front of the sentences. So what I'd like you to do is have a look at the two sentences that I've got for you there. And if it's here, I'd like you to change, I drove to work today into the present tense. So today I, and then I would like you to change, Sam is eating the last piece of cake into the past tense. So Sam, hmm, the last piece of cake yesterday. Pause the video, have a go at those two sentences, come back to me with your answers. Okay, how did you get on with those this morning? Let's have a little look. So, yesterday I drove to work and today I am, I am driving to work, okay? So the present tense was Sam is eating the last piece of cake. So we're gonna change that to Sam ate the last piece of cake, okay? Remembering that we've got our irregular verbs here, driving and drove, ate and eating. So today's learning to, is all about using the progressive form of verbs, okay? So we're gonna have a little look about what that exactly means, and then we're gonna have a little go at using it in our writing today. And it's lots and lots of complicated words, but really it's something quite simple. So. We know what verbs are, there are actions within a sentence. And we're gonna be looking at the progressive form of these verbs. So the progressive means that things continue to happen, okay? They haven't stopped, like when we caught the ball and it's over, okay? It's more, we are catching the ball because it's continuing to happen, okay? We're gonna have a little look at this, okay? So these things are carrying on happening. She was running, we've got the ing at the end. Alice is balancing. We've got the ing at the end because she's still doing it. She hasn't stopped. And they are playing. Again, we've got that ing at the end. And they are continuing to do that. They are still playing. She's still running. They are still balancing. Okay? And that's what we're going to be looking at in our writing today. So the progressive form is continuous. It means that the action in the sentence, the verb in the sentence, carries on for a period of time okay it's really important because this tells us that sometimes that the same thing was happening at the same time as something else so let's have a look at this in action so here's our tortoise tom's tortoise was waiting for his lettuce okay it's past tense because it was not it is but we know is waiting for his lettuce okay sometimes it means that we can use this form to show us that he was waiting for it while something else happened okay like this so Tom's tortoise was waiting when he saw the lawnmower, okay? So he was waiting when he saw something else. So the progressive form of verbs in the past and the present. So let's have a little look, okay? So if we've got he walks, we're going to be adding, making it he is walking if it's going to continue. We're still going to use the word walking over here, but instead of it being in the past, he is walking, we're going to change that to the past, and it's going to become he was walking. Okay, let's do another example. She runs, okay, so we're going to move it into the present and make it progressive. So she's not, she runs, it means it's finished, but she is running means that she carries on doing it. And if we want to put that now back into the past tense, we're going to change our is to a was, and what's that going to be? She was running fantastic well done everybody okay the dog whines see if we can spot the pattern we've added the is in as we've moved it into the present progressive it's going to carry on the dog is whining okay the dog is whining and if we change that to the past tense we've now got the dog was whining okay one more example with this we listen okay now can it be we is listening. Does that sound right? We is listening. No, you're absolutely right. It must be we are listening. We are listening. Well done. So instead of changing it from is to was, I wonder now if you can guess how we change we are listening to we hmm listening. What verb am I going to change it to? We are listening becomes we were listening. Well done. That's really, really tricky one. Okay. So we move from the present all the way into the past just like the little dogs just moved on the screen okay let's have a little look so 
The progressive form of verbs tells us that they're doing something, okay? And it carries on happening. So we're not going to use the word leap in our sentence. We're going to use the word leap ing, okay? Because we're going to make it in the past. So we want that is it to happen. So yesterday we were leaping or yesterday I was leaping, okay? The children leapt is our past tense. And if we're still doing it, the children were leaping, okay? Just like we said, the children were leaping or I am leaping, I was leaping, okay? It shows that the action happened for a period of time or if something else happened at the same time, like in this example down here. So the children were leaping about when the teacher opened the classroom door. So it tells us the children were doing something, but something else happened at the same time. So sometimes we need to choose whether we're going to use the past tense or the progressive tense, okay? The whole class is having its best day ever. If we write that in the past tense, we would change is having into the whole class had its best day ever. And if we want it in the progressive past, it's the whole class was having its best day ever. Can you see how it's ever so slightly different? It's still happening, it's already finished and it's over. We're going to use this in our writing today. That one sounds longer. Okay. So let's have a look, look at an example. We're going to work through some examples together and then we're going to order a story. So if we want to change it from the present tense, she kicks the ball. We're going to change it and make it the progressive present tense. She is kicking the ball. And then we're going to change it into the past progressive. She was kicking the ball. Remember, it's is and was that are most important and that our verbs, our regular verbs, end in ing, okay? Now it's your turn. Pause the video here. Can you change he bakes a cake into the present progressive? He something baking a cake. And then the past progressive, he, hmm, baking a cake. Happening now, happened yesterday. Have a little go. Okay, let's see how you got on then. So did you get he is baking a cake? And he was baking a cake? Added the ing. Changed the is's and the was's. One more example then. They write a story. Okay, this one isn't a regular word form. Okay, bit more tricky. Pause the video. Your turn. Okay, did you manage to work this one out? So we wanted to change to write to be writing, okay? But remember, we can't say they is writing a story. We have to say they are writing a story, which means we're going to change it to they were writing a story. Well done if you managed to get that. It was a bit tricky, that one. Okay, so here is our writing challenge for today. You've got a very short ghost story here, but as you can see, it's all been jumbled up. So what I'd like you to do is copy the story into your book and I'd like you to put it in the correct order for me, okay? Now in here you will notice, hopefully, that we've got some past progressive tense, some was and ings happening, okay? So there's one here that you have a look at. He was driving quickly, okay? That's, he is continuing to do that. So you can use those to help you to put it into order. So I'm going to give you the clue that it starts with, it was a cold night in December. That's number one. It was a cold night in December. See if you can put the rest of it into order. And if you want an extra challenge today, have a think about using some different colours to underline the past progressive, was driving, yeah. And just the simple past tense, which is something like this, he stepped our ed endings being the simple past tense instead of our progressive which was was ing okay so pause the video pop it into the correct order and then come back to me to check your order and you finished Okay, now you might have a slightly different order to me, but let's read through the story and see if you spotted those progressive forward forms 
and those simple verb forms. So this was my order. It was a cold, dark night in December. Justin was driving home after working late at the office. We've got was driving is our progressive form. The road was clear and he was driving quickly. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a young woman stepped out in front of him. She was wearing a long black coat and carrying a small bag. Justin stepped hard on the brake, but it was too late. He got out of the car and looked around, but there was nobody there. While he was looking around the car, he felt a strange presence that sent shivers down his spine. He was looking under his car when a truck stopped behind him. The truck driver walked up to him and asked him if he needed any help. So Justin told the man what had happened. The truck driver didn't seem surprised when Justin told him about the young woman. A young woman was killed in a car crash on this road in December 1984, he said in a mysterious tone. So hopefully you've managed to go through that story today, put it into some sort of order and really, really well done if you managed to spot those progressive verb forms and the simple past tense verb forms that we had as well. Okay, um, we're going to be carrying on with this learning tomorrow. We're going to be doing our um, starter task on past and present. And then we're moving on to some extra work that we've got um, to help with our writing this week. Okay, so thank you for the listening for the writing. Remember, you've also got corrected curriculum in your pack. Um, if you look in your work pack, remembering that we've started a brand new topic this week. We're thinking about the features of coastlines and I want to know how the different um rocks have been shaped when you go to the seaside um there's an essential task for everybody within there which is some videos and some reading about how the coastline was formed and then if you want to you can show us what you've learned about that through writing a newspaper report doing a model perhaps explaining a task or even um researching as well and creating that letter to the Prime Minister. Okay, I hope you have a brilliant, brilliant day today. I'll see you for more learning tomorrow. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye guys.